you have ever worked for the evil queen of the universe? Anybody? Anybody ever work for the evil king of the universe? There is one everywhere, I think, so there are lots of kings and queens with lots of little kingdoms. Well, I think you can all relate to the fact that there are difficult, truly evil people to work for. And there are times that we go through very, very hard situations at work. And you know what I'm talking about. A project that you thought was going to be easy turns into a disaster. How did it happen? What, what started out well has suddenly become something that keeps you awake at night and has you stressed and has your blood pressure up. A simple little fixable mistake that would have gone unnoticed anywhere else now has upper management scrutinizing you like you are some sort of criminal and you're nervous. You're walking down the hall and people who used to be friendly to you suddenly are looking at something else on the wall as they pass you. You feel this chill in the air. You, you walk into a room and people stop talking or they, or they stop whispering. You know, it's one of those, oh, hi, hi, Kathleen, how are you? And you know instantly that they were talking about you and that terrible sinking feeling starts to overtake you. Maybe it's a difficult boss, maybe it's a difficult coworker. Every time you come to work, they needle you in some way. They get under your skin. They've managed to find your weak spot, and so they exploit it and get that ice pick in there and just work it and work it and work it until you're building scabs as fast as you can, but it's not enough. And before long, you feel yourself a nervous wreck. You come home at night. You're worried. You're, you, you think it's time to look for another job. How am I going to survive this? Well, my friends, in this economy, is it time to start looking for another job just because you want to get away from the annoying coworker? I mean, this is a tough time in which to start looking for a job. That doesn't mean jobs aren't out there. But we may be in a situation where we can't jump ship because this job is paying our mortgage. And right now, we've got to stick with it. And we are stuck in this place that feels like treachery and infamy and anger and frustration every moment of the day. Well, you are not alone. I've been there. I've been there more than once. I c I've been there twice in a really big way, and like all of you, in, at other times in, in rather small ways. But whatever your story, however you have been involved in something like that, we all know the effects of working in a stressful, treacherous job situation. We feel isolated, alone, set apart, trying to put together uh, something that has instructions that were written in a foreign country. You know, have you ever tried to put a shelf, a bathroom shelf together, and you're, you've got all the parts laying out on the floor, and, and you start putting it together, and, and finally you get to the one that says, take, you know, this implement, and put part A into slot B. And you look and you look and there is no slot B. No matter where you look, there is no slot B. And, and, and you, you, you stare at it and then you stare at the picture and, and finally you're like, where is slot B? So you turn it upside down and you look at it another way. There's no slot B. So you read further and the instructions become even more vague. Once finding the slot, twist sideways to insert upside down. And you're still frustrated because there's no slot. And you're finally, like I am, because this is how I get when I get frustrated, I'm screaming in the room, there is no slot B. Where is slot B? It is not working. And you cannot pack the thing up fast enough to get it back in the box and get it back to the store because there is no slot B. And I take it up to the counter and I say, there is no slot B. I'm returning it. Now, if we could only do that with our jobs. <laughs> If we could only do that with our jobs, there is no slot B. What happened here? Everything's gone wrong because of what? I couldn't find the slot. It doesn't work. Something's not happening. We can be in jobs like that where what's wrong with this picture? I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. I'm holding the implement just the way I should. I'm looking at the picture just the way it shows me, but I don't see why it isn't working. Nothing's working no matter what I do. It's not working and everything seems twisted upside down, turned sideways, and you can't figure out why the job is so stressful. The people hurt you. Just walking into the building frustrates you. You lay awake at night unable to sleep because you know you have to go to work the next day. You've got Sunday night-itis where you can't sleep because it's Monday. It's gonna be Monday and you're gonna have to walk into that job. 
Once you're into the week, you can kind of make it, but Sunday nights, you can't sleep. Well, we've all been there. We've all been there. And I, I, I dare say that many of us will be there more than once. We'll go through this, this situation more than once. But for some folks, it's especially difficult because there are some truly treacherous situations to go through. There are truly deeply stressful jobs that we must live through. The question is, how do we do it? How do we do it when we are working in a situation that is filled with backstabbing and politics and downright evil people, not just disturbed people, evil people, people who truly have nothing out for you but their worst. They want you to feel bad, and they seem to work up ways to make you feel awful, as awful as possible, say things, do things, sabotage you. You can either be thinking, I blew it, or you can say, I did my best, and I succeeded. I got out of there with my dignity still intact. I want to give you seven principles for surviving a tormenting work environment today. Seven principles. Seven principles that even if you only use one of them, you may not agree with all seven of them, but if you use only one, I promise you that you will be light years ahead of people who have none, who have no strategies whatsoever. These strategies will help you decide what to do next because in a difficult warlike situation, you have to have a strategy like a Navy SEAL, have a plan, get through that mission, make the goal, and get back to base quickly. It's got to be surgical and you've got to think about it and you've got to work it out. And I'm going to give you those principles today. But before I do, I want to tell you that there is a reason that you're going through this. Because you know, we always ask, why me? Why me? Why me? One of my favorite commentators is fond of saying, why not you? Why, why not you getting hit by the bus and being paralyzed? Why not you, the one that, that, that lost that loved one? Why not you, the one that, whose house burned down? Why not you? Life happens. We, we're, we say, why me? But there is, there's, there's a, why not you? You were blessed to not get hit that day. You were blessed to not have the flood come to your house that day. You know, life happens. But I also have this other message for you about that why me thing. There really is a reason that it's happening to you. We often say, I, what did I do to deserve this? What did I do? You didn't do anything to deserve it. It's life. You didn't have to do anything to deserve it because these things happen to people. You just got caught in the crosshairs that day, that week, that month, that year. It's your bad period, whatever it might be. But I want to tell you that there is a reason that you're going through it, and it's this. Growth does not come without death. Growth does not come without death. There are some things in us that have to be burned out and we have to die so that we can move on. And they take some difficult situations to burn them out of us. It's hard. And we say, I, I, really, I really don't want to grow that way. But it's a character building thing. It's a character building experience. I know some of you want to raise your hands and say, wait, wait, I, when I didn't sign up for that character building thing. I'm not, not interested. But life does not ask your permission. Life just has a way of taking you through. A seed, my friends, does not grow without dying first. You open the ground and you put the seed in and then you cover it back over. And if that seed could speak, what would it say to you? I don't like it here, it's cold, it's dark. Get me out, get me out, get me out. But that ground has to provide the pressure and the nutrients and the environment to break the outer shell of that seed so that something can actually grow. And if that seed keeps digging itself up to see if it's growing, it's not going to grow. These are character building experiences where you are buried in a tough time that you're going to come out a full grown plant. Corn as high as an elephant's eye, if you will hang on. The other thing is, the other reason that you're going through this is you need to know that joy comes in the morning. There will come an end to this project. There will be a time when you go, Phew, made it. And you'll be proud of yourself because you handled it properly. But first you need the seven principles. I'm going to give you seven principles on surviving a tormenting work environment.